the heavens and the earth will shake. It says, therefore, since we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace. How many need grace? How many understand grace is one of the most powerful forces in the universe? Because of grace, we've been saved through faith. And we can boldly come before his throne of grace to find mercy and help in our time of need. And God is saying, I'm going to acquaint my people with the power of my grace in this next season of time by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear because our God is a consuming fire. Just lift your hands up. Father, I thank you right now, God, that you are baptizing us in grace. Lord, you're baptizing us in your divine abilities, in your divine enablements, Lord. And Lord, that you're giving us gifts. Lord, that word grace is also the word for gifts. It's also the word for favor. So Lord, I thank you, God, that you're giving us grace to navigate the race. God, you're saying that we've got to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we are going to keep our eyes on you. We're going to run this race. If things start shaking, God, we're going to keep our eyes on you and we're going to draw even more on your grace and on your mercy in Jesus name. Amen. Don't, don't get afraid. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Remember last year, the Lord told me about the shaking. We preached about it last year, several times. And the Lord just said, tell the people not to be afraid because the shaking is going to be your making, not your breaking. How many, how many saw God bless you through the two years of coronavirus lockdown? How many people really saw some blessing? I mean, it was, a, it was a hard time for a lot of people, but look at all the hands that went up. Can God turn a curse to a blessing for us? That is our positioning. That's how we position ourselves. So I'm going to just give you three little quick points about how, we, how we're going to run, okay, and the grace that we're going to need to run in this next season. Number one, we need grace to run with vision. Now, we are Vision Church, and we believe that vision brings life. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, people perish. Other translations say things like, where there is no progressive revelation or where there is no prophecy, People dwell carelessly, people wander aimlessly, and people cast off restraint. Is that a picture of the generation that's coming up today? Well, we're, we're a church that believes that the voice of God can speak, and when the voice of God speaks, it changes everything. One word from God changes everything. And we understand that when we have a vision of what it is God has called us to do and called us to be, it gives us a capacity to have a brand new perspective on life. It gives us an ability to navigate the challenges, to navigate the, the hard times. When you know what God has said, you can, you can actually overcome whatever the enemy tries to throw at you. Most of you know my story. The Lord spoke to me when I was 16, told me that I was called to preach. I went to my pastor, who was a denominational pastor, who didn't have a paradigm for that. and patted me on the back, and he said, Girly, that wasn't the voice of God, because women don't preach. And then they dismissed me from the church. Seriously. Praise God, that's right, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> and so, I went to another church two weeks later, and I'd never been there before, and the pastor... Um, got up. I don't even think he was wearing shoes. Um, quite the hippie church back in the 1970s. And he called me out and I got my very first prophetic word. He said, young lady, the Lord says to tell you, you will preach the word and signs will follow. Amen. So understand this. I understood God's calling on my life. I didn't have any paradigm for what people thought about women in ministry, but I knew what God said. And because I had that vision, I was able to navigate, honestly, a lot of persecution, a lot of religious spirits, a lot of people that wanted to shut me up and shut me down. I'm so grateful for Bishop Hammond and my husband who would not let that happen. Matter of fact, sometimes they just kind of push me. Like, you are going to obey God, okay? But it gives you a different perspective, and it gives you a different 
uh, vision for your priorities, how to prioritize your life. I knew that I had to give myself to that calling. And here's the thing with vision is that a lot of times we, we get a vision from God and we know what the Lord has said over our lives. How many of you have some prophetic words or some things God has spoken to you that you know some things that God has for your life? You just, you know, you know that you know. But how many know that just in knowing doesn't mean that you won't have obstacles? And I was thinking last night about a time when my kids were younger. Tiffany will remember this. Um, Tiffany's getting scared now. But um, no, our, our kids got this prophetic word that God was going to give them the vacation of their dreams. And so my kids have faith, okay? And so after praying about some things, we, we did some things. And we, were, we decided we were going to take the kids to Venice and then go on a cruise from Venice of the Mediterranean. Isn't that awesome? God made some incredible provision. I can't take the time to share that. But so, so we, we got packed up and we flew into Venice, miracle after miracle happening as we got to Venice. But when we got there, I had a little bit of a rude awakening about traveling in Europe. Because in our family, okay, we do not pack light. Jason Catalano packs light. He's been married into our family, okay? But the rest of our family, we do not pack light. I believe personally in packing pretty much like Noah packed the ark. You take seven of everything that's clean and two of everything else, okay? That's kind of how I, how I pack, all right? And so, and so when, when we packed, we each, had, we each had a duffel bag, like a big duffel bag, and then we each had a carry-on. Because, you know, sometimes when you check your bags, you may never see them again. So we each had a, a carry-on. But when we got to the Venice airport, we had five big duffel bags and five small carry-ons. That's 10 pieces of luggage. And the taxis over there, I mean, we had, a, we had a hotel we were going to. The taxis in Venice are the size of a, how would I describe it? Yeah, like a Barbie car. Yes, that's a good way. They were the tiniest little cars, so basically, we could put one person and two bags per car. There was no way you were going to get any more than that in a car, and I thought, there has to be a different plan. So I was talking to the lady, and I said uh, to the lady at the information desk at the Venice airport, I said, this is where we're going, and I pointed to the address, and she says, ah, yes, yes, there is a bus that goes there. There was a bus, that's right, there is a bus, and she said... And your whole family can ride the bus and all your luggage. She said it like that. She had to say it like that. All your luggage. And it's only 50 cents a person rather than $50 a car. So we were like, yes, let's get on the bus. We showed the bus driver where we wanted to go. He said, yes, yes, I will drop you off right in front of there. So we get on the bus with all our luggage. And he takes us to a place that is right in front of our hotel. And he drops us off, so we unload all of our luggage onto the side of the road, and he drives off. Now, what he did not say is that, yes, the hotel was right there, but there was a six-lane freeway with four concrete barriers standing between us and our, our hotel. And this is, I started thinking, this is how it is sometimes. We see where we need to go. We just have no idea how to get there. And then we got all this baggage. <laughs> we did not throw away the baggage. <laughs> we are going on this trip with all of our baggage. But we had to figure out, and that's how it is sometimes in God. We've got to find the way to navigate how to get where we're going. All of us have these prophetic words, these prophetic visions, these things that God has said to us, but we've got to know how to navigate to get over the barriers and to get where we need to go, keeping our eyes on the prize. We knew where we were going. And so as we stood there on the side of the road with all our luggage, people were driving by, honking their horns and screaming out their window, Americans! Thank you very much. Okay. And so my husband remembered that as we were driving on the bus, that he had seen about half a mile up the road that there was an overpass that we could climb up, take our bags over, and climb down. 
It was a pedestrian overpass. And so we took off down the road with each of us pulling two bags down to the, to the place where we had to cross over. How many know that God will bring you to a place where you have to cross over? And that sounds wonderful, except it was a lot of work for my husband <laughs> and my strong son, okay? <laughs> he wasn't as big back then, but they carried the bags up and over and down. But once we got to the other side, how many know sometimes you get to the other side, you navigate a challenging season, you get over some things. When you get over some things, there's still another path that you've got to take. And nobody told me on this side of the road that on that side of the road, the path was going to be about a three foot wide dirt path that fell off on a 50 foot cliff. That we had to have two pieces of luggage each to navigate up the path. So we were pushing. How many understand God will give you grace to navigate a narrow place? It is not comfortable, and it can be a little scary. Have you ever felt like you were in a narrow place? You couldn't deviate one, one way or the other? I mean, if you, if you deviated this way, you fell into traffic. If you deviated this way, you fell down the hill. Not a good choice, right? We've just got to know, we've got to remember where we're going. We've got to keep our eyes on the prize. We've got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. We've got to keep our eyes on the vision that we know that God has spoken to us. And he'll give us the ability to navigate the barriers. He'll give us the ability to navigate the challenges. He'll give you the ability to navigate the narrow place. You don't have to live forever in the narrow place. But sometimes we do have to navigate the narrow place until we come out on the other side. 